Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Corey Johnson. Today's topic is going to be about drugs and sex. Basically, I'm going to be breaking down, you know what I mean, like the consequences and the repercussions, you know, that can happen to you if you was to, you know, get into drugs, you know, because drugs kills and also, you know, getting involved, you know, selling drugs. It's illegal. It's against the law to do that. And, you know, a lot of people still would disobey that law and do these bad things anyway. But the consequences and the repercussions are whenever you make all that money and you get shot by somebody that's jealous of you or envious of you because you are making more, they know that you're making money. You know what I mean? Are you selling drugs up in their turf? Either way it go, you're gonna have bad luck. You get murdered and killed. Even if you don't owe nobody no money. You know what I mean? You can be selling drugs and then you're, you're paying everybody off. But somebody jealous. There's still somebody that's jealous of you. They're going to know you're doing good and they will shoot you and kill you. That's called haters. You know what I mean? A hater is a person that will hurt you or kill you just because they're jealous of you. Just because you're looking good. You know what I mean? You can be selling drugs in the hood, looking all good, and you don't even have to bend or dead them anything. They just hate you because they constantly see you all the time and they know you're making money. And they see you dress all good, next thing you know, they'll kill you. And just come and rob and take your shoes. And some people just kill you. So you basically, you're putting yourself up in harm's way of not only just, you know what I mean? getting um, killed for being in the wrong territory or you can be selling on somebody's turf or just get killed just because you look good or just because somebody envy and jealous of you they know you're making money they just kill you even though you haven't been a dead them anything but there's another consequences and repercussion that you can suffer from and that's for getting busted by the cops or the police you know you get one of getting indicted and wind up, up in, you know what I mean, having to go to court. And these judges, they prosecute you 30 years these days. You know what I mean? From selling kilos of cocaine and, you know what I mean, a crystal meth. You're putting your life up in danger, you know. And you're putting your family life up in danger too. Because you got to realize whenever, a lot of time, whenever you are selling drugs for a drug lord you are being spied on these drug lords got billions of dollars you know what i mean they work for another company that's worth billions of that have billions of dollars and trust me they are having someone follow you you are being followed because you are handling their drugs that's worth millions and you are and you understand what i'm saying and and they need to make sure nobody not trying to rob you so they know that you're going to go and sell their drugs and it's going to make a lot of money so they don't have to have somebody to follow you but just in case somebody try to put a hit out on you while you while you're doing their dirty work they'll have somebody follow you with a gun and they will kill the person they will protect you you understand what I'm saying which, which indicates whenever it's time for you to go home by your wife and your kids after you sell the drugs after you do the dirty work for for the drug lords, they know exactly where you live. You know what I mean? So when you're getting involved in drug in the drug game, you're not only putting yourself up in danger, but you're putting your wife and your children up in danger too. You know what I mean? I'm more than sure you heard stories of, you know, a person decide to stop doing dealing with the drug lords. Hey, I'm out. I don't want to sell anymore. Next thing you know. 
you hear on the news that an entire family house, you know what I mean, caught on fire overnight. And the husband, the wife, and the kids is dead. Or you, or you, or you hear on the news that, you know, the uh, a family was, you know, having a little picnic in front of the house. With the kids, the wife, and the husband, and, and the black car, the neighbor said a black car drove by. <laughs> Somebody shot him with a, uh, a, a Uzi 9 and shot and killed all of them. Everybody just died. And a lot of time it be because, you know, the husband decide to want to, you know, be a daredevil and take a risk, you know what I mean, and to sell drugs. So I'm, I'm telling you that it, it's consequences and repercussion is no good. Are you just going to wind up getting killed or are you going to wind up up in jail? And, and some judges, they get so stupid with you. You know what I mean? They'll put you in jail for life. They are. They'll put you in jail for 50 years. You know what I mean? And that's why you have to, you know, you have to really think. And and you have to decide to not to do wrong. You, you have a choice to do right, to be right, or to be wrong. You know what I mean? When you be right, that means you're clean. You have a good soul. You know what I mean? You don't have to worry about, you know, going to jail because you want to be right. You know what I mean? Or, you know, if you hang around the wrong crowd or the wrong folks, you know, you can be innocent. But if the people you hang around it can be a bad influence and cause you to try some smoke and then you try the weed but you have no idea they didn't tell you that they put heroin up in there or they didn't tell you that they put mojo up in there or, or crystal meth and you smoke that and you wind up getting hooked you thinking that it's just a natural weed you know what I mean because uh, you know, a lot of people they have hardships and hard time and have a lot on their mind you know what I mean they've been a lost their girlfriend or uh, the girlfriend been a lost a boyfriend, or they been a, somebody been a lost up in court. Lost their children decide to smoke weed, and they feel a little better after they smoke. You know, it helps them to relax and stuff like that. But if you hanging with the wrong crowd, somebody, you know what I mean, gonna be a bad influence and say, "Hey man, try this. This is some good stuff. This is the purple weed." You know what I mean? You be like, "Purple weed? I heard of purple weed. Let me check that Snoop Dogg." Out. But they. A lot of people are dishonest. When you're hanging with the wrong crowd, they wouldn't tell you that they got crystal meth in it. They wouldn't tell you that they have uh, heroin in it. And you smoke that, the next thing you know, you become hooked. And you get worse and worse. You know what I mean? And, and you're taking these drugs. And next thing you know, you got scars all over your face, looking all ugly. You know what I mean? Crystal meth, you, you're starting to look, you, you be 21 but from the looks of the drugs, I have you looking like you're 61 and your face be all oil in, peeling all off, black kids be all in your face and your scars, you're looking all ugly in the face, everywhere, you know, you're so messed up, you know what I mean, you can get so messed up on drugs, you know, it'll cause you to become impotent. Impotent mean that your penis won't be able to get hard anymore. Drugs can do that. If you be stupid and you want to constantly snort, 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 you're you, you going to wind up losing your feelings down there in your penis. And a lot of ladies that get on drugs, you know what I mean, they wind up losing their feelings in their vagina. They can't skeet no more. They can't have any, you know, type of orgasms anymore. Or their sexual appetite just won't be there anymore. You know what I mean? Then they try to go and get some help at a mental clinic because they have depression that they can't have orgasm anymore and they don't understand why they can't get horny down there. And next thing you know, the mental doctor gives them antidepressants and you know what I mean? And all kind of other pills and that will make them even worse. You know what I mean? They, they really wouldn't be able to, to do them for sure. You know what I mean? And a lot of those mental medications, it had caused a man to become permanent impotent. You know what I mean? Because you still have drugs of cocaine, crystal meth, you know what I mean? Or LSD, you know, or, or heroin in your system. And then you try these drugs, you know, it specifically tell you on a drug bottle, you don't mix these drugs if you are doing street drugs. That's why doctors always say, are you doing any street drugs? 
you know what I mean, anything, uh, or cocaine, or anything like that, you know what I mean, the reason why they have to ask you this, because they know that if they prescribe this medicine to you, and you are doing those street drugs, it's gonna have, um, it's gonna take a hold on, on your health, you're gonna have all kind of um, things happening to you, you know what I mean, you may suffer cold sweats, headaches, blindness, you know what I mean, impotent, a loss of hair, and if you lie to the doctor and say, no, I don't do no cocaine, nothing like that, and they write you a prescription of 50 milligrams for this antidepressant, and you take it, next thing you know, your penis can't get hard anymore, you know what I mean, and a lot of men, they are impotent, and they've been impotent for like 10 years and just can't get no erection anymore, you know what I mean, because, you know what I mean, they make the wrong decisions that's why it's very important to make wise decisions you know because if you if you decide to be right meaning you're not going to put yourself up in danger don't hang around the wrong crowd if you know that they're smoking weed and selling drugs don't hang around them because what if they have you go to that party and you know that they're doing drugs and, and you know what i mean people selling drugs and you go to that party next thing you know you got polices this is a raid pow they shoot you know what I mean? And everybody have to go to jail. You know what I mean? Because that's how I be. You know what I mean? You could be in a car with somebody and you don't even have to have anything to do with it. You know what I mean? And they go stop by a bank and rather the bank come run. You, you stay in the car and they come run back to the car with the money. Is it, you know what I mean? And next thing you know, they speed up and the cops come. You going to jail too because she was with them. That's the way it works. Or if a cop stop, you know what I mean, and he got drugs in the car underneath the seat. Oh, y'all going to jail. You're going to have to take it. you be like, well, I'm sorry. That's not my other hand. Of the, nothing to do with it. And the cop gonna going gonna to be like, well, you're going to have to take that up with the judge. You know, drugs, it will affect your thinking abilities. It will cause you to have memory loss. It can really totally annihilate your brains. You know what I mean? You be very forgetful a lot, short term, long term memory, and it makes you crazy, and it makes you become a violent person. It can really turn you to a devil. It can make you run outside naked and make you do crazy things. It can make you beat up your girlfriend and make you, you know what I mean, do wrong things it, it really it would take over your mind you know and you wouldn't be able to get your your mind back a lot of people they you know what i mean they wind up dying you can die that's why they say drug kills don't try you have to be careful you know who you hang around you know and you have to be watch your company and don't don't take chances you know what i mean because it's too risky you know what i mean um and another thing, you have to, um, you know, be be wise and, and, and reasonable, you know what I mean? I'm going to give you some um, scriptures, you know what I mean? You know, um, because, you know, the Bible does speak about, you know, you have to reason. You say, come, let us reason uh, together, say the Lord. Okay, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 13 it says but when you are tempted he god will also provide a way out so that you can endure it it tells addicts that there is always a way back to sobriety even when it all seems hopeless never give up Addicts can overcome the temptation of drugs. Now go to Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1. Wine is a mocker and beer a brawler. Whoever is led astray by them is not wise. Then go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. 
Go to Titus chapter 2 verse 3. Likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderous or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. Okay, now go to Romans chapter 13, verse 13. Okay, I'm going to teach the difference, you know what I mean, about the sex thing. You know, because in the Bible, it speaks, you know, the Lord tells you or God tells you, you know, to be fruitful and multiply. And, and up in that verse, I'm going to show you the Lord didn't say anything about you have to get married. But they have other prophets, you know what I mean, in the Bible that, you know what I mean, are take, you know what I mean, what God said and put their own two cents in it and tell you to do another thing totally different. It's just like a, you know, a head CEO would tell or hire a supervisor to tell the employees this. And then a supervisor would tell employees what he wants to tell them instead of telling them what the big guy told them. You know, so I'm going to break it down. So it is up to you. You know what I mean? That's why the Bible says you got to study to show yourself approved. Because a lot of these these people in the Bible are like supervisors. You know what I mean? Or managers. And they, you know what I mean? They are not doing what God told them to do. They're doing what they want to do. And they'll tell you their opinion instead of doing God's way. So you have a right to reject. To say, I object. You know what I mean? To what, you know what I mean? This person said in the Bible, and I'm gonna go with what this person say in the Bible. You know, that's the balance. You have to balance it out. Now go to uh, Romans 13, chapter 13, verse 13. Let us behave decently, as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in decision and jealousy okay now uh, when the Lord say um, be fruitful and multiply the Lord or God or Jesus is talking about sex he wants you to have sex okay now what they say up here in Romans say not it says um, not in sexual immortality you see when you when you break that down sexual immortality means when you go too far you know what I mean? When you committing the crime, as such as, you know what I mean, child molestation, sexual immorality, or committing adultery. You know what I mean? On your wife with another woman. You know what I mean? But you know, there's a reason with that. It. It's like a judge. If you tell a judge and have evidence of a video, and you that you ask your wife several times can you have sex you know what i mean and you got videos of four nights straight she say no and then you prove it to the judge and, and your judge see your wife saying no then you had sex with somebody else where the judge gonna be understanding and it's not gonna charge you with adultery because uh, the judge is gonna reverse that you can counter sue and the judge will charge your wife for neglect you know or, or depriving you you know what I mean? So the Lord is not going to punish you from going to sleep with somebody else because your wife has no, had no business being evil, which is depriving you from sex, you know? Okay, now go to Matthew chapter 18, verse 16, New King James Version. But whoever caused one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a milestone were hung around his neck and he would drown in the depth of the sea. That's it. Um, sexual immortality. It's like I was saying, having sex with children and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Or just, you know, you're just going on and just doing wrong things. If your wife is treating you right, you know what I mean? And if you go have sex with uh, another woman, then you would be held. God will punish you and you can get held up in the court too for, for adultery if you're just being evil about it. You know what I mean? Now go to King James Bible. It says, and God Bless them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and 
replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moved upon the earth. And Isaiah, now, now notice, okay, wait. In Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, King James Version, it says, Come now and let us reason together, said the Lord. Do your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow, and they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. You see, that's what I was explaining and breaking it down. Like, you know, you go sleep with another woman because your wife kept telling you no, or your girlfriend keep, kept telling you no. You know what I mean? Well, God is not going to punish you from going to get it somewhere else because she had no business depriving you. Your wife had no business depriving you. So that means you be white as the snow. That's why the Bible says right here again, come now and let us reason together, said the Lord. Do your sins be as scarlet. They shall be as white as snow, though they be red like crimson. They shall be as wool. All right. Although followers of God have been instructed to be fruitful and multiply, sex isn't meant solely for procreation. It's meant to be a joyful, intimate experience between partners. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24 reads, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Psalms 12, 7, I mean, sorry, Psalms 127, verse 3, see, English Standard Version. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb, a reward. So he's telling you, see, other prophets are telling you something different. It's telling you sex is a reward. It don't, the other prophets, some prophets are saying, it's not saying nothing about marriage. Now, they're just saying sex is a reward to women. It feels good to produce offspring, you know. All right, now go. All right, this is the definition. A definition of sexual immortality: the evil a subscribed, ascribed, a s c r i b e d to sexual acts that violate social conventions. Type of evil immortality, iniquity, wickedness. That we go to talking about the children again. Child molestation, you know, uh, pedophile. You know what I mean. Very bad, then you go too far. Now go to Stones of Solemn, chapter 1, verse 2. It say, Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the wife of your youth. A loving dear, a graceful doe, let her breast fill you at all times with delight. Be intoxicated always in her love. Now this is a, a prophet, Stones of Solemn. You know what I mean? Now, basically, he's saying it in the wife of your youth, you know what I mean? But in the beginning of the Bible, God did not say, you know what I mean, you have to have a wife first before you fruit, be fruitful and multiply because nobody wasn't, wasn't, you know, being married or getting married. He just said, be fruitful and multiply. God bless you with a penis and bless you with a vagina for a reason, to have fun. You know what I mean? You can't go and abide by another human being that's being opinionated. That's his opinion if he don't want to have sex, if he wants to wait until he get married. You know what I mean? But you can be wise as a serpent and study to show yourself approved. You know what I mean? All right. Now, with the Proverbs, chapter 5, verse 18, verse 19, it says, Drink water from your own well. Your own well. Let me see. Your love only with your wife why spill the water of your springs in the streets having sex with just anyone you should reserve it for yourselves never share it with strangers all right now go to leviticus chapter 18 verse 22 you should not commit adultery all right i go to exodus 20 chapter 14 how beautiful is your love my sister my bride how much Better is your love than wine and the fragrance of your oil than any spice. I go back to Songs of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 10. How beautiful and pleasant you are, O loved one, with all your delights. Your stature is like a palm tree and your breasts are like 
its clusters. I say I will climb, climb the palm tree and lay hold of its fruit. Oh, may your breasts be like clusters of the vine and scent of your bread like apples and your mouth like the best wine. It goes down smoothly for my beloved gliding over lips and teeth. I am my beloved and his desire for me. Sons of Asylum, chapter 7, verse 6 to 12. Enjoy life with the wife whom you love all the days of your vain life that he has given you under the sun because that is your portion in life and in your toil at your toil under the sun. And go to Ecclesiastes and say, but because of the temptation to sexual immortality, every man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. And Ecclesiastes, that's another prophet or a human being in the Bible. He's being opinionated. So it's up to you to listen to him or just listen to God and just, which, you know, be fruitful and multiply. Mm. All right, go to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 2. Let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for God will judge the sexual immoral and adulterous. Hebrews 13, chapter Oh, chapter 13 verse 4 therefore my judgment is what we should not trouble those of the Gentiles who turn to God but should write to them to abstain from the things polluted by idols and from sexual immortality Acts chapter 15 verse 19 to 20 it is actually reported that there is sexual immortality among you and of a kind that is not tolerated even among pagans, for a man has his father's wife. First Corinthians chapter five verse one. But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immortality or of any kind of impurity or of greed, because there are improper for God's holy people. These are improper for God's holy people. Go to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter five, verse three. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immortality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, decisions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit Inherit the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. This Ephesians telling you this. Okay? And go to um, Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 20. It says, For this is the word of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immortality, that each one of you know how to control his or own body, his or her own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. And go to Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 to 5. To the unmarried and the widows, I say that it is good for them to remain single as I am. You see, this Thessalonians, he's a different prophet. And he's opinion. He's telling you his opinion. He's telling you that you need to be single. You know what I mean? He don't think that he should get married. So do you understand? So that's why a lot of people say the Bible is contradicting. Well, you see, they're just a lot of pastors and preachers and human beings. They're opinionated. So the question is, which one are you going to listen to? These pastors or what God said from the beginning? God said, be fruitful and multiply. He didn't say, God didn't say nothing about no marriage. Okay? Now, let's go uh, with the finished reading. In First Thessalonians chapter four, three and five, it say to the unmarried and the widows, I say that it is good for them to remain single as I am. For if they cannot exercise self-control, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Okay, he's telling you it's not. First, he say he's telling you to not the, the you know what I mean that he don't recommend <laughs> that you get married. He recommended you be single. Now he's saying it is best to marry. Why are you contradicting your own self, bro? 
You understand what I'm saying? I'm teaching you a lesson. Let's read it again. It's, he says, uh, to the unmarried and to the widows, I say that it is good for them to remain single. He's telling you it isn't good for you to remain single as I am. He say he is single. Now he's contradicted himself when he said this part. But if they cannot exercise self-control, they should marry. You know what I mean? For it is, it is better to marry than to burn. Now he's changing it. Make up your mind, bro. Are you going to teach them to be single like you? Or are you going to teach them to get married? You know what I mean? So you, you have to balance the Bible out. You know? All right. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 8 to 9. It says, flee from sexual immortality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the sexual immortality person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. And go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 to 20. It says the husband should fulfill his wife's sexual needs. And the wife should fulfill her husband's sexual needs. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 3, it says, Do not deprive one another, except perhaps by agreement for a limited time, that you may devote yourself to prayer, but then come together again, so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Satan is going to tempt your man, ladies, to go commit adultery if you keep telling him, no, he can't have no sex from you. You understand? And then go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. See, I am afraid that when I come again, my God will humble me before you, and I will be grieved over many who have sinned early and have not repented of the impurity, sexual sin, and debauchery in which they have indulged. Now go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 21. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loved himself. And the wife must respect her husband. Ladies, you have to respect your man. Or your man can leave and get somebody else if you don't respect them. It's telling you. And this Corinthians, he's a passing prophet, but he's speaking reality. He's speaking reality. And you need to listen to this. You have to respect your man because ain't no man that's going to tolerate disrespect. And we're going to go to the last scripture six, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery in his or her heart. You see, you have to come and let us reason together, say the Lord. You know, you're going to have problems and you're going to want to be tempted if your girlfriend is, is, is depriving you from sex. You know, if you don't want your, you know what I mean, your man to to be flirting with other women, you have to respect your man. All right. I hope you guys enjoy this. You guys have a.